We have all wondered, at least once, how to easily overcome the obstacles in our lives without consciously thinking about it. The way you relate to the obstacles that arise in your life may be the best indicator of your level of self-awareness. A conscious person tends to become even more conscious, and an unconscious person tends to become even more unconscious. Therefore, what is this consciousness, and why is its development important? Consciousness is a misunderstood word. The word consciousness derives from the Latin term conscientia and means knowledge. But we are talking about a reflective or intuitive knowledge. We have to take care of each human being and their existence. Using only intuition, if we take this consciousness into consideration, it can turn into feelings. From the perspective of ancient mystics, you can only see yourself if you can persevere. You can talk, breathe, create, feel your heartbeat, or move your body. But consciousness is the ability to realize that you are not a robot. In one form or another, all sages have told us over time that the source of our unhappiness or suffering is unconsciousness. Whether it's a stone, a worm, a tree, a bird, an elephant, or a human being, almost anything is the format of the same simple material. You can reach the intelligence that makes life happen to us, or as we otherwise call it, consciousness. The only reason we experience our daily lives and the state of fixation in life is because we realize that life is happening. If we're unconscious, we don't know if we're alive or dead. Are you a little confused? Well, without having to use too much imagination, imagine what you would feel when you're asleep. You have thoughts, but you're not aware as you are in the waking world. You have no concept that life is happening around you. During sleep, we tend to oscillate between the phase of dreamless sleep and that of dreamy sleep. In the waking state, similarly, most people do nothing but oscillate between the usual level of unconsciousness and a deep unconsciousness. When I tell you about the usual state of unconsciousness, I want you to think about that moment of identification with your personal thoughts and emotions with your reactions, desires, and resentments. This is the normal state of most people. In this state, you're led by the mind, dominated by the false self, and you're not aware of being. It's not a condition that causes acute pain or unhappiness, but almost continuously, it creates discomfort throughout sleep, a condition that affects our bodies and our lives outside of the realm of sleep. Maybe you don't realize this because it's so much part of the normal life, that we don't hear any noise in the background if the sound intensity is low and the level of awareness is low. So it's essential to raise your awareness in automatic life for the ordinary situation, for the power presented to increase. When you can learn to be able to recognize your thoughts and emotions that typically surprise you, and you can point out the emotional level and the level of thinking, the mind is usually resistant. In essence, we do not automatically stand up for the contract of consciousness. We don't have to reach a certain level so we can become more aware. We're all aware to a certain extent. It all depends on the level we get to. In conclusion, we need to be able to raise our consciousness. We just need to be able to rise to a certain level to have access to this and to experiment. Consciousness is in everything. When you are aware, you can turn things such as breathing and food into life. You are alive. You may be aware of this, but so far there is minimal access. As one accesses it, the sense of delimitation expands. Nature has given us a certain ability to be conscious. But the face training, the care part that we see, is narrow and limited. What do you do for the radical transformation of any life experience, and how do you stay in constant discovery? Try to find the answer, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>